welcome back to another video so today i wanted to do an aiming tutorial if you want to skip through all the hoopla by scrubbing on the bar below and it'll take you to different chapters of the video that i do cover that you are most likely interested in hopefully this is your one-stop shop for learning how to improve your aim and if you do enjoy this video can we get a like goal of 500 likes i would really appreciate it and it also shows me that this is the kind of content that you find helpful and that you want to continue to see and make sure to subscribe if you're new around here or if you always watch my videos but you just haven't made that subscription official yet honestly man like what are you waiting for just subscribe today you watch my videos you might as well subscribe make it official so yeah guys without further ado let's just get into the video all right so the first thing that i wanted to talk to you guys about is how to find your sensitivity in order to find your best sensitivity you want to go into your controller options and you want to scroll all the way down to your sensitivity here so for my horizontal stick sensitivity as well as the vertical stick sensitivity i do recommend that you start off at a much higher sensitivity now the reason why is because you're going to slowly work your way down after you get a feel for which best sensitivity is for you so for example we're starting off at a 13 here ads sensitivity multiplier is going to be a one here as well as a one here as well what you want to do now is you want to go into a private match and you do want to find a target now this map is very perfect because there's many targets on this map that you could actually practice on so for me for example i'm on a 13 right now i'm moving around you know this is you know for me personally it's a little too much but here's a target anyway just for an example so i'm gonna try to snap onto my target as much as i possibly can all right and and of course for me being a much more experienced call of duty player i'm able to snap on my target and it's a lot easier for me but however it's it's a little all over the place for my liking so i'm definitely gonna bump that down just a little bit so this is basically what you want to do you want to keep bumping it down maybe by one or two and you also want to play around with the sensitivity multiplier settings so the low zoom is mostly important for most situations but the high zoom is mostly for people who enjoy using snipers so for me i'm not going to touch that not really a sniper guy the sensitivity that i found that works best for me is a 0.80 and we're just gonna keep bumping down the sensitivity till I feel completely confident in controlling that aim. So also, you can also try strafing left and right, seeing if you can stay on target. And if it's too hard for you to stay on target and your stick is going around everywhere just like that, you might wanna keep bumping that sensitivity down until you get a really good accuracy result and you're able to stay on target. All right, for me personally, in real life situations, a seven is just fine. I don't need to go anything higher than that. I feel like that's my personal sweet spot. So everybody's sensitivity is gonna be different than other people. That's why I do recommend going to a private match if you truly wanna find out what your perfect sensitivity is gonna be. Next, we want to talk about centering. So centering is very important. And you may be asking yourself sometimes when you watch your favorite YouTubers videos like, yo, how the hell did he know that there was going to be an enemy like right there? Centering is very important. You want to keep your crosshairs at the center of your screen as much as you possibly can. You never want to have it too low and you never want to have it too high because that is going to give you a severe disadvantage when you're going into high enemy traffic areas. They're already going to be locked on you and you're most likely going to die in that gunfight. So going to a private match, and just keep walking around uh, make sure you also want to point it in doorways points of entry and places where enemies are most likely going to be that's how they give off the illusion that they knew exactly where they were coming from but no it's just the basic fundamentals of just being one step ahead of the enemy by pointing your crosshairs in the right directions so i'm going to come around here on this side and i'm going to pre-aim right here so I, you know, I didn't even really do much right there. I had my crosshairs directly in the middle of my screen. So by the time that I turned that corner, I was already aimed in on my target. I'm not walking through this area with my crosshairs pointed here because what's going to happen is if there's an enemy like right there, he's going to go ahead and shoot me. So that's why when you're coming around this corner, you already want to be rotated right here so as you can see that does give me the clear advantage if an enemy happens to pop up there then that's when the viewer might be questioning how did he know he's going to be there it's not that he knew he was going to be there it's just that he's applying those basic fundamentals of centering your crosshairs next i want to talk about pre-aiming now pre-aiming goes hand in hand with centering so we're going to put that all together right now i'm just going to run around the map and i'm going to pre-aim in areas where there's most likely going to be enemies when i'm coming around this corner my crosshairs are centered and i pre-aimed around this corner directly right here um you know i'm not pre-aimed over here i'm not pre-aimed over here i'm pre-aimed here in the middle because that gives me some room for adjustment in case there is an enemy that pops up here or on this end of the wall pre-aim in doorways windows there's no windows on this map unfortunately but you get the idea 
you know you don't want to be wasting your time you know pre-aiming at an object you know there's no reason to do that or a wall or something like that you know you want to make sure every move that you make in the game there is a purpose for it and it does apply to the bigger picture which is obviously getting that kill so now that you've got the basic principles of how to center as well as knowing what your perfect sensitivity is we can now graduate to the next lesson of this video which is going to be how to engage in long range gun fights the right way so you know when you're in a real life situation and you're trying to lock onto a target that's moving you may find it a little bit difficult to lock onto that target because most players make the big mistake of just using their right stick to aim down sights so for example if i was just aiming down sights on this person and he was moving around you know all i'm doing right now is i'm standing stationary and i'm using my right stick to be able to follow the opponent however if you want to get better at long range gunfights what you have to do is you also have to aim down sights on your target and you also have to use that left stick as well to help you stay on track now of course in a real life situation it's going to be something a little bit more unpredictable but using your left stick while you're simultaneously making those micro adjustments with your right stick will definitely give you a much higher accuracy and how to predict the enemy movement and speaking of predicting enemy movement you also do want to mimic the enemy's movement so if he's moving left then you want to move left with him as well that's where the left stick comes into play this is actually especially helpful for warzone as well as people are constantly moving trying to stagger their movement and avoid getting killed so that's one way of downing an opponent when you're from really long range is using that left stick in conjunction with your right stick to help you make those minor adjustments. All right, so now that you've learned how to engage in long range gunfights properly, the next step is to learn how to pop fire or burst fire. So when it comes to burst firing and pop firing, it's all about accuracy. So in long range gunfights, I see a lot of people making this huge mistake uh, of them just actually just firing their weapon just like this. You know, yes, me as a experienced player, I'm able to control that recoil somewhat, and I actually wasn't really trying there. However, if you're newer to Call of Duty, the best way to control that recoil is to pop fire. So let me just give you an example. So let's go ahead and use this target here for an example. So I'm at a pretty far distance right now. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap fire. So instead of spamming the button like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap fire. So as you can see, the results are a lot more accurate. Most of my shots are on target. Not too many of my shots went outside of this white paper here. So that's why it's very important to learn how to pop fire in certain situations and it can be very beneficial in Warzone, especially when you're engaging in those long range gunfights. We call it peppering. You know, we want to pepper people in Warzone. That's the way to do it from super long range. Just like this, as you can see here, it does look like pepper, right? And by the way, I like pepper. So leave a comment down below if you like pepper as well. All right, so now that we're on the subject of controlling that recoil, I do want to cover how to control recoil patterns. So every gun in this game has its own unique recoil pattern, and it's very important if you really want to dial in and make your accuracy as 100% as possible, it's really important to get to know your weapon. So for example, the MP5, let me just show you an example here. I'm just going to aim down sights, and I'm just going to fire my weapon at the wall. I'm not going to try to control that recoil at all. I'm just going to fire the weapon just for demonstration and as you can see that recoil pattern starts off here and it comes up here and it ends here so if you want to be able to counteract that recoil all you got to do is basically do the opposite of what it's doing so let's go ahead and try to counter that recoil all right and as you can see the first few shots were a little rough but for the most part most of my shots were hitting over here and keep in mind this is without attachments that do control that recoil so it ended up being a smaller diameter here and a lot more precise what i did there was i was pulling on my right stick slightly down into the left that's how i was able to counter that recoil now it isn't perfect this is just demonstration purposes but as you can see like i said earlier the diameter is much smaller much more precise and much more accurate for a shot all right, so now we're going to get into the drill slash tutorial portion of this video where we're going to be putting into practice everything that we have learned up until now. So what you want to do now is you want to set up a new custom game. You want to go to game setup and a map that I prefer for this would be Hackney Yard. Mode will be team deathmatch. Game rules. You want to put your time limit on unlimited because we want as much time as we possibly can to be able to practice. Score limit is going to be unlimited as well. Max health is going to be put at 300 points. We want to be able to aim down on our opponents and fire our weapon for as long as we possibly can. The idea behind this is that we will give the opponents as 
as much health as possible, which also gives us as much time as possible to be practicing our aim. And health regeneration is gonna be fast as well. And the next setting that you wanna change is to change your field upgrade charge rate to times 10, because we're gonna be using a munitions box. So of course we don't wanna run out of ammo. We just wanna keep on going. All right, so for the bot setup, of course you don't want any friendly bots. You want all the kills to be to yourself. So you're gonna put the enemy bots at six. Right now that's the max that it's given me. And the bot difficulty is gonna be recruit because you don't wanna worry about winning gunfights right now. You just wanna worry about getting your aim on target as much as possible. All right, next you also do wanna set up a class setup of your choice. So for me, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using the MP5. This is a very popular setup. We're gonna be using a monolithic integral suppressor, Merc 4 grip, 45 round mags, stippled grip tape, as well as that FTAC collapsible stock. All right, so now that we're in match, we're pretty much just gonna go around, aim down sights on as many enemies as we possibly can, keep our crosshairs as centered as we possibly can. Keep in mind, it's not gonna be perfect. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. We're gonna look for enemies. We're gonna be pre-aiming in areas where there's most likely gonna be enemies. All right, still looking right here. As you can see, that health is really high, so it gives us more chance to work on our aim. All right, here's one right here. I'm tracking. I'm moving side to side. Of course, I'm going to take cover. Oh, my goodness. But as you can see, we have many opportunities to work on our aim. Oh, my goodness. We just got overpowered right there by way too many enemies at a time. So you may actually want to turn the health down to make it normal so that you can still run around the map. All right, I'm tracking and work on your aim instead of worrying about trying to stay alive in that gunfight. So again, I'm keeping my crosshair centered. I'm pre-aiming around those corners where, er where enemies might be. There's one behind me right here, one really far away. It's actually burst fire a little bit, there you go. You can't really tell about the burst fire because I was doing it so fast, but this is burst firing right there as well. I'm actually gonna burst fire right now so you guys get, get an idea of how accurate it actually is. All right, one's actually up here. So as you can see, my crosshairs are already aimed in in an area where I believe there's an enemy at. You know, it wasn't pointed at the wall or anything. All right, there's one down here. Let's actually look for this guy. He's moving pretty fast. Here he is. Right there. All right, one just actually came in from their spawn. As you can see there, I hip fired in that situation. No need to aim down sights when you're that close, especially with the setup that I'm running. Let's try to engage in a long range gunfight here. Let's regen. All right, look how well my aiming is right now. Cause I'm applying those simple principles. There's one up close, got him. All right, so now let me show you one little tip for close quarter gunfights how to win more close quarter gunfights as well. So instead of aiming down sights, you're gonna make that minor adjustment, aim out of your sight and recenter your aim. Okay. So that wasn't really a good example, but I'll try that again. I'll try to get really close, here we go. See how I aim out? It's very good because sometimes if you're on that standard aim assist, that rotational aim assist can be very sticky and it could actually potentially mess up your shot. So aiming out of your sights momentarily and then giving yourself time to readjust your aim by aiming down back sights can be very beneficial. Aiming out, aiming back in. Only do that if you find that it's really hard to track your opponents who are really up close to you. All right, so one of the tips that I do wanna go over is the importance of centering your thumb on your right stick. Now, if your thumb is hanging out on the outer edges of your thumbstick, then you're gonna find a difficulty in aiming down sights on your opponent and getting a more accurate shot. So always remember to keep your thumb as centered as possible on that right thumbstick and you'll be able to get a much cleaner shot. And it's pretty amazing how that one little detail is gonna give you the best results as far as accuracy goes. So that's something that you can do that will help you out from a practical and physical standpoint. Last but not least, I cannot make an aiming tip video without including the addition of Control Freaks. If you've never heard of Control Freaks, better get accustomed to it now. Go to their website, controlfreak.com. They do offer accessories that do increase the height of your thumbstick, and that's what enables players to be able to play on a much much higher sensitivity and be able to really control their aim as accurately as possible. The longer the stick is, the more comfortable you will be controlling higher sensitivities. It all just comes down to science and all that stuff. They have all that information on their website. I am also sponsored by them. So if you want to pick up a pair of control freaks, make sure to use code turbo on your way out to save some money. And it also does support me. So yeah, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys did learn something from it. Hopefully that this is the only aiming tip video that you will need in Modern Warfare to be able 
helpful to improve your accuracy. So if you did find this video helpful, make sure to drop a like on it. It'll show me that this is the kind of content that actually helps you and that you want to continue to see. And of course, subscribe if you're new around here. Join Turbo Nation today, man. Make it official. That's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Peace.